Hi, welcome to Merry Brain Teaser, the two envelopes problem. It's holiday time, and let's say that your slightly sadistic uncle gives you and your sibling each an envelope as a gift. You inspect the envelopes. They are identical and sealed. He tells you the following. I have put a certain amount of money in one of these envelopes. I put twice as much in the other envelope. I flipped a fair coin to see which of you got which envelope. You can each open the envelope in your hand. Or you can choose to trade them first. But you both must agree on a strategy before opening them. You both think for a bit. Then you give your conclusion. So you say the following. Each envelope is equally likely to have the larger sum of money. There is no advantage or disadvantage for either of us to trading before we open our envelopes. But your sibling disagrees. So your sibling says the following. No, we definitely should trade first. Let's call the amount of money in my envelope M. There is a 50% chance that your envelope contains an amount 2M and a 50% chance it contains M over 2. If I keep my current envelope, I get the amount of money M. But if we trade, on average I get 2m plus m over 2 divided by 2, and that's equal to 1.25m. So I definitely want to trade. So in response to this, you raise two objections. Here's your first objection. Okay, so let's say you're right. Doesn't the same logic apply to both you and me, so that by trading, we both increase the amount of money we'd get, on average? But that's impossible, because there is a predetermined amount of money split between the two envelopes. And now, your second objection. Again, let's say that you're right. So we trade envelopes. After we've traded, wouldn't your logic still hold and mean that we should trade envelopes again? But that just gets us back to where we started. So then, by your logic, we should trade yet again. Won't we just keep trading envelopes for an infinite amount of time? Your sibling holds firm. They say, you raise interesting points, but my logic seems right. Okay, so question, which one of you is right and why? So this is one of the variations on what is called the two envelopes problem or the exchange paradox. If you want to try and figure this problem out on your own, pause the video now. Okay, so now let's look at the solution. So here's the short answer. You are right and your sibling is wrong. But where did your sibling's logic go wrong? So let's look back at what your sibling said. They called the amount of money in their envelope M and then they said, there is a 50% chance that your envelope contains an amount 2m and a 50% chance it contains m over 2. These statements are correct if you look at all possible values of m, but it's not true for an individual value of m. 
So to see why, let's look at this problem two different ways. Method one. So imagine the scenario where your uncle has put 10 to the minus three Bitcoin into one envelope and two times 10 to the minus three Bitcoin into the other. If the amount in your sibling's envelope is defined to be M, Half the time your envelope contains 2m, and half the time it contains m over 2. But every time your sibling's envelope has m equals 10 to the minus 3 bitcoin, your envelope contains 2m, 2 times 10 to the minus 3 bitcoin. And every time your sibling's envelope contains m equals 2 times 10 to the minus 3 bitcoin, your envelope contains m over 2, 10 to the minus 3 bitcoin. In this scenario, for either of the possible values of m in your sibling's envelope, so 10 to the minus 3 or 2 times 10 to the minus 3 bitcoin, it is never equally likely that your envelope contains 2m or m over 2. So when your sibling tried to figure out the average amount of money they would get if you traded envelopes, they wrote down this expression, 2m plus m over 2 divided by 2, which was equal to 1.25m. However, in this expression, the first term, 2m, is only valid when m is equal to 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin, and the second term, m over 2, is only valid when m equals 2 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin. So if we take that expression and substitute in the values of m that are valid for each of the two terms, we actually get that this expression simplifies down to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin and that's the same as the average value of m. And this shows us that by trading, you neither get an advantage or a disadvantage compared to just opening the envelope that's in your hand. Okay, now for method two. Okay, so here, let's forget about the case where your uncle puts 10 to the minus 3 and 2 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin in the envelopes. Let's just go back and look at your sibling's logic. Okay, so what your sibling said before was that the amount of money in their envelope was called M, and that that meant that there was a 50% chance that your envelope contains an amount 2M, and a 50% chance that it contains m over 2. And we pointed out that this is true if we consider all possible values of m, but it's not true for an individual value of m. So let's ask your sibling to be a bit more concrete with their logic. So your sibling says the following. For the sake of argument, let's imagine that I looked inside my envelope while our uncle wasn't looking. And let's imagine that I saw that my envelope contained 2 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin. Then there's a 50% chance that your envelope contains 4 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin and a 50% chance it contains 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin. So let's check this logic. There are two ways that your sibling can get an envelope that contains 2 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin. Okay, so here's the first way that that can happen. So your uncle can put 2 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin in one envelope and 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin in the other. Then your sibling gets the envelope with the larger amount. In this case, there is 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin in your envelope. 
and this means that there's a total of 3 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin split between the two envelopes. Okay, now let's look at the second way that it can happen. So your uncle can put 4 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin in one envelope and 2 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin in the other. Then your sibling gets the envelope with the smaller amount. Then in this case, there is 4 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin in your envelope. And this means that there's a total of 6 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin split between the two envelopes. Okay, so now ask yourself, are these two scenarios equally likely? So this is a question about your uncle's generosity. Is he more likely to have split 3 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin between your envelopes, or to have split 6 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin between your envelopes? This determines the probability that there is 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin, or 4 times 10 to the minus 3 Bitcoin, in your envelope. So, if you want to assign probabilities to the contents of your envelope, you need to make some judgments about your uncle. Okay, so in the end, the conclusion of both Method 1 and Method 2 is the following. Your sibling is making a very specific, and for General M, incorrect, assumption about the prior probabilities of how much money your uncle would put in the envelopes. If you'd like to understand this more deeply, you may be interested in Bayes' theorem, so you might want to check out the videos in the Bayesian playlist available on this channel.